Sorry about it being so shaky. It's great. It's, it's, looking at this. Yeah, it'll look amateur. That's, that's never going to be professional. <laughs> I've decided when I try and get a professional, I just keep putting everything off. So it is what it is. It's running at the moment. Yes. Right, power supply, your basic circuit. You remember your basic circuit for Ohm's Law? Yeah. You need a power supply. What else do you need? Voltage meter. You need a vote okay, you need an ammeter and you need a voltmeter and you need power supply. Resistor. Resistor. The resistance. Or whatever well Resistor. the metallic conductor or whatever it is that you're measuring the voltage of. We do the same thing. for uh, a light bulb. And later on we're gonna have to do the same for um, copper electrodes. So we've got the same idea here. Our device now you've got to remember that anything you say gets picked up. <laughs> let's let's okay, simplify yeah. things just a little bit. Power supply coming to here. This guy is known as what? Rheostat. Rheostat, variable resistor. What is its function? Very, very, very the resistance. Very the resistance. Or in turn, <coughs> to if I've got two leads connected to it. Conductor. It changes the current or it changes the potential difference across it. Okay, so basically it will allow me, remember, in fact that's why I had this guy here. If I have six volts across those two points, mm -hmm going in. So I have my power supply connected here and then coming out I have two leads connected to here and let's say they're equal resistances. What would be the potential difference across these two points? Six volts across here. What would it be across here? Three. Three. Remember it'll be three there and it'll be three there. Right? Because remember it's the work done to push the current the whole way around the circuit. Half of the work done is going to be across there. Half of it is going to be across there. Right? Here I've got five. One, two, three, four, five. If I apply ten volts between those two fingers, two. what would be my potential difference there? Two. two volts. So that's really how I'm using this guy. The reason I'm using it is because I want to get a really low voltage. Remember my junction voltage might be one volt or it might be two volts or it might be even less. Right? So here my lowest voltage, if I just use the power supply, would be two volts. I want to go it from zero up to two volts. So what I do is I put two volts across here. And then very slowly, it's a bit like I've got a continuous version of these. I can go, if that was two volts there, that would be a fifth of two volts, two fifths of two volts, three fifths of two volts, and so on. So I'll have my two volts across here, and then I can increase very, very slowly as I bring that along. So here's part of what you need. Sarah, can you just make sure this is being focused? Just the diagram. Hold on, wait one sec. My power supply. This guy here is the variable resistor. And just like I can keep one end at this end, and then depending on where I put the arrow, that will determine the potential difference that's going through the rest of the circuit. So if that was two volts coming through here, if I had it going the whole way across, what would it be, my potential difference? Two volts. If it was halfway across, it would be one volt. So as I move this over and back, that's determining the potential difference that's going to affect the rest of my, car the rest of my circuit. Okay? And that you're going to have, in your leaving side experiment, if it asks you to list your apparatus, that's what you will need. An ammeter, remember now we want the current that's going through my diode and I want the potential difference across the diode. And we just, all we've got to do then is take measurements of those two things and draw a graph. Okay, so power supply, variable resistor, a rheostat. This then becomes, feeds my circuit. And at that stage, all I need to do is measure the potential difference across it and measure the current going through it. So this guy here is to measure my current. This guy here is to measure my voltage. Now, the reason I've got this little setup here is rather than measuring my current, <coughs> just rather than getting numbers on the current, if I just turn it on, turn this all the way down, just to show you in general what's happening. I've got a voltage here, which is turn my voltage on to two volts. So if I can I, Richard or Mark, or just hold it roughly like that. So at the moment it's reading 0.518. I don't know what my current is, but I can't be getting an awful lot of current because my light bulb isn't lighting. So instead of the current going through the, uh, the ammeter, I've given it an alternative pathway to go through a light bulb. So as I slowly increase my voltage from 0.5 up to 0.6, we're getting very little at 0.6. At 0.6 now it's just starting to kick in, so we're just mm -hmm. getting voltage. And I gradually increase it up to, let's say, 0.7 up here, and now it's starting to get bright I'm and... Here. You can you switch? Sorry. <laughs> All right. Now, what we can't really see is whether it's linear. In other words, as I double the voltage, does the current double? Or is it relationship? Well, it's not an inverse relationship because as one gets bigger, the other gets bigger. But if we were to plot this on a graph, look. So we can certainly see as one gets bigger, the other gets bigger, right? 
But to put this on a graph, we need numbers. So rather than using the light bulb to give us an indication, we use what? Meter. Um, yeah, meter. So we take out this circuit, the light bulb here, so current can no longer go through this circuit. So now if the current wants to go the whole way around, it's got to, if I give it a pack here, it's got to go through this circuit here. So because there's so many leads, you will really need to have it spread out just to get a feel for what's going on. So the current now is going through here, through the ammeter, back through here, and then it doesn't go through the voltmeter, it's going to go through the wires on the bottom, through the diode, and back out here. My voltmeter I just dip in. Remember the voltmeter goes in series or parallel? Series. Series. Yeah. Series. Series. No, the voltage goes in parallel. Voltage goes in parallel. Ammeter, 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 ammeter in ammeter. series. So the current has to go through the ammeter to get from there to there. It's got to go through the ammeter. So that's in series. It doesn't have to go through the voltmeter. In fact, it, it, most of it doesn't go through the voltmeter. So that bit there is in parallel. Okay? So all we do now, nice and quickly, is we take our readings. I need to set this to amps, and my amps is going to be very, very small. In fact, it's going to be milliamps. So once again, we're going to go through it, and we won't take down all the readings. But you can see here, you're getting 1.3. My voltage is point, almost 0.5, and I'm just starting to get a reading of 2.7. That's milliamps. So it's a very, very small amount of milliamps. As I increase it to 0.6, I'm only getting six milliamps, right? So we're still getting a very, very small amount, not enough to drive any uh, light bulb running like that. I'm now up to six and a half. I'm getting 17 milliamps, so it's starting to increase. I go up to seven here, and now I've got 29 milliamps. Remember, I got very few for the first couple of volts. 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5 volts, I was getting nothing. Now it's gone up to 29. If I go up to 0.75, I've got 50, I've got 60. If I go up to 0.8, I've got 80. In fact, I'm, at, I'm not even at 0.8 yet. I'm at 0.77, <coughs> which is as much as I'll get here, and I'm up to 90 milliamps. So for the first few 0.1 of a volt, 0.1 of a volt, 0.2 of a volt, 0.3 of a volt, I got very little current. Once I got above about 0.6, the current started to rise very quickly. Right? So if you plot that on a graph, these would be the numbers I took you on. Obviously, you're going to do this experiment yourself if you want to just hold that over roughly so she can kind of focus in on it. Again, even if you get a series of numbers, it doesn't make an awful lot of sense because it's hard to sort of visualize that, which is why you the graph. So when you draw the graph, in fact, when you draw the graph, I didn't, pop the, I didn't connect the points, but that you got hit the voltage until such that you're about taken. In fact, Not too good. I should have a graph drawn here, but what you can see are the points on it. And what do we refer to that point? Well, it's called a certain type of voltage, <laughs> junction voltage. <coughs> the junction voltage is where it starts to rise very, very suddenly. Okay, and that's the experiment that you'll be carrying out. You might notice here, and you have the fault button in and out. Yeah, I've been doing that. Okay. Uh, see this guy here? I hope you yeah. Can you see that? Yeah. That's known as a protective resistor. The reason it's there is because this diode doesn't want an awful lot of current going through it. As soon as I exceeded that junction voltage, at that stage, it was almost like there was no resistance in this part of the circuit. The current just goes straight through it. Mm. And therefore, the current will start to rise very, very quickly. And it can, if you're not careful, it'll get, blow the diode, it'll burn it out. So what they do here is they put a protective resistor here. Therefore, even if there's no resistance here, there okay. will still be some resistance back here. And that might be only 10 ohms or it might be 100 ohms, mm. not an awful lot. Even 100 ohms isn't an awful lot. <laughs> But the, its function there is as a protective resistor. So if you're asked in an exam, what's the, you don't have to put it into your circuit, but sometimes they might give you a circuit and put that there and let's say, what's the function of that guy? It's a protective resistor. Okay?